Hey guys, so you know how I created that multi tool build before using Getaway Artist and No Time to Explain? Well, what if I told you we can create a much faster multi tool one with just a Scepter, Getaway Artist, and Devourer? I'm not even joking, I think I found the build that makes using Osteomancy from multiple turrets obsolete as you can keep spamming them one after another, as long as you get the needed kills to trigger it. On top of that, the fragments and aspects used are ones that you already have unlocked, with a few changes here and there. If you thought Gateway Artist was already broken with Prismatic Warlock, think again, as I'm going to show you an even more dumb version of it. Starting with the exotics of the build, our aim is to maximize full ability cooldown for a million R grenade usage. This will pretty much require the same items we used in our previous build, so you can skip this section to the aspect and the fragment section instead, or for those that decide to stay, we're going to be using the following, which is going to be Aegis Scepter and Getaway Artist for achieving our goals. Getaway Artist Azotic Trait Dynamic Duo states, convert your arc grenade into an arc soul and become amplified. A pretty standard exotic that allows us to create an even more powerful version of the base arc soul that we're used to. We then combine this with Aegis Scepter for a special trait, Aegis Cool, which states, a final blows with his weapon generates a slowing burst effect around the defeated target. This key perk is what's going to allow our devour effect on our build to drastically increase the cooldown we get for our grenades, while also allowing us to debuff targets and get a damage buff all in one. You can swap the primary exotic out though, as the build isn't solely dependent on this one exotic. Conditional Finality is a great alternative to use if you like to stay on your toes, but deal big damage to the more tougher enemies. At the same time, a chill clip fusion rifle can also do the trick. For aspects of fragments, we have the following. Feed the Void, where again any ability kills grant Devourer. Devourer improves self-healing and also grants grenade energy. Bleak Watcher, where holding your grenades will convert into a stasis turret that fires slow projectiles at targets. Facet of Dawn, where powered melee hits against targets grants Radiant. Powered melee final blows grant Radiant to you and allies. A facet of coverage where your arc, solar, and void abilities deal increased damage to targets afflicted with darkness debuff. A facet of ruin which increases the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen target and increases solar ignition's radius. A facet of devotion where defeating targets afflicted with stasis or strand debuff grants bonus light transcenders energy. A facet of purpose where picking up an all power grants either amplified, restoration, frost armor. Wover Mel, or Overshield, based on the damage type of your super. Breaking this down, we have Enhanced Abilities Effect via Facet of Dawn, Courage, and Ruin, and then we have some self protection available via Facet of Purpose and Devour. We do have Facet of Devotion and Hope, which both have their fair share of help, especially Hope when combined with mods. Ultimately, Devotion is the only one that I can say you can be swapped out for something more better, like Facet of Balance, if you want more ease of control for your abilities. I would say though that ultimately what would give us the fast ability cooldown for turrets is linked down to Devourer being active, and then use a facet of Dawn, Courage and Ruin to escalate the spread of damage for fast ability cooldown. Once Devourer is active and you use Aegis with it, your build will rapidly replenish your grenades within 5 seconds at best. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority. A strength will play a part in the build, but not by so much as we can create status shards when needed. Resilience, we have R at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. Unlike last time we focused on recovery, this time we'll focus on resilience level to make our build even more tankier. No key mods are needed for this area, as having Devour on hand will keep us live and kicking. If no Devour was on hand though, then adding the elemental reduction mod of our choosing would have been the second best option. Discipline, we have R at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via Storm Grenades. The following grenade is required for the build so we can activate our exotic usage here. This slot here has a slow cooldown rate even when maxed out, but unlike last time, where we needed a kickstart mod to help, with Devour on hand, we can have the following mods as our support. Impact induction times 3 for a 20% cooldown, auto restoration for a 10% all ability cooldown, and distribution mod for a 6% all ability cooldown. Additional mods, which are highly recommended, we have the following. Having Stasis Siphon mod and Powerful Attraction mod for producing and collecting all the power within our Venicity. A Stasis Surge mod for a 10% Stasis weapon buff that will be useful down the line. And Special the Heavy Finder mods, Reserves and Scavenger Ammo mods 
are highly recommended for the build and how fast we will run out of ammo. Now as we have covered our main primary weapon here, here are the additional weapons that I'm using to support the build further. Having the No Survivors SMG is highly recommended if you're able to grab one for the special perk combo it has, which is Demolitionist and Pugilist. These two combined are amazing for the Prismatic class and will heavily support our two key abilities non-stop even when we do mess up. However, I do believe the build is sufficient enough to where you don't actually need additional support for grenades and strength stats. This means if you want to pick a weapon you enjoy more here, then you can without deviating away too much from the build as shown. Having Quilliam's Terminus with King Tally and Dynamic Sway Reduction is an amazing heavy to have in hand when you really need to deal with all sorts of adds and need a good boss DPS. As I have a base magazine of 70, I can get an extra 30% damage buff via Killing Tally and then an extra 10% VAR Surge and Radiant, we can do some pretty amazing damage against all sorts of bosses. A heavy stasis rocket launcher is also good, but a stasis machine gun is the key weapon you really want to have on hand. Similar to our last build we did in nearly every way and form, the only main difference we have now added is the change in aspects, fragments and certain mods being used. Which doesn't seem a lot at first, but this ultimately is what makes the build so worth it. You see, as long as the vow is active, we will be getting back a huge chunk of health from grenade regen per enemy killed, which will all feed directly back to our grenades. And since we are using getaway artists for this, it will allow us to pop an arc saw on status turret all at once. And once we consume our grenade, this we can repeat over and over again. However, this is how the build actually becomes broken, since it's covering two grenade areas in one, so every time we get our grenades fully regened, we are creating and refreshing our stasis turrets and arc souls, one after another. Now if you want to see how well this becomes, I would highly advise you use this build in a crowded area on your own to start with and see how well it goes, as without the mods being included, the build will generate enough turrets to create a small army for yourself. It honestly baffles me with how strong this actually is, as getting something similar like this for stasis subclass would require osteomancy, a weapon with demolitionist, and a key fragment for increasing grenade cooldown. This here not only simplifies this, but allows us to mix both light and dark for a consistent damage buff via the facet of coverage, which is ultimately what the build is going to be maximizing with the two in hand. This is the sort of build you want to use if you're covering multiple angles at once and need to stop enemies from closing in onto an objective at all cost. Something like Onslaught mode, which would have been really useful when it first dropped. And when it comes to fragments, you don't need to worry about needing all of them unlocked, as it works pretty well without them. Now the only con towards the build is how you can't use it when activating your prismatic effect, which is sad to see, but you can use it with the light subclass instead for that damage buff and increased ignitions plus stasis effect. Outside of experiment more with the build, it's quite a funny build to use with your team if you want to bring an early winter wonderland to Destiny 2. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below. Well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like on the sub bar here. I'll leave a dim link for the build, like always, I've bought more stuff like this than I have players available covering all types of builds you like. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.